Hi there and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In the last tech tip I looked at the install requirements for Hyper-V in Windows 10. In this video I will look at how to actually perform an installation of Hyper-V. By the end of this video you'll have all the knowledge necessary for installing Hyper-V on a Windows 10 system. So I'll now change over to my Windows 10 professional computer and we'll get started. Installing Hyper-V on a Windows 10 system is actually a very straightforward process. To perform an install of Hyper-V, I'll first click Start. And in the search bar at the bottom, I'll search for Control Panel. From the search results at the top, I'll then select the Control Panel option. This opens the Control Panel window. As you can see, my Control Panel applets are currently organised in Category View. The category I'm interested in is the Programs category. If I select the Programs category, notice at the top we have a link, Turn Windows Features on or off. If I click on this link, this will open the Windows Features dialog box. As you can see, there are rather a lot of features that can be enabled and disabled in Windows 10. In this case, the feature I'm interested in is Hyper-V. If I expand the Hyper-V feature, notice that the Hyper-V feature is made up of two sub-components, Hyper-V Management Tools and Hyper-V Platform. So what exactly are these components? The Hyper-V Management Tools, as the name suggests, is essentially the tools that the administrator uses to administer the Hyper-V installation. This includes all of the GUI management tools, such as the Hyper-V Management Console. It also includes all of the Hyper-V PowerShell commandlets. Meanwhile, the Hyper-V platform is essentially the Hyper-V program itself. The Hyper-V platform will install both the Hypervisor and the Hyper-V services. This is all very well, but it does raise an important point. By separating the Hyper-V management tools and the Hyper-V platform into separate sub-components, the administrator does not have to install both components. In other words, the administrator could choose to install just the Hyper-V platform, but no tools to administer the platform. Alternatively, the administrator may also choose to install just the Hyper-V management tools, but not the actual program. Of course, you may be asking at this point, well, why would I want to install Hyper-V without any tools to administer it? And why would I want to install the Hyper-V management tools without an actual program to administer? These are good questions. To understand why, consider the following. First of all, imagine that you have a computer running Windows 10. This computer is very powerful. It has a very fast processor, lots of RAM and plenty of hard disk space. Because this computer is so powerful, it's a good candidate for running Hyper-V virtual machines so the administrator installs Hyper-V. However, the administrator installs only the Hyper-V platform and not the Hyper-V management tools. Elsewhere on the network, the administrator has their own computer. This computer is also running Windows 10. On their personal computer, the administrator installs just the Hyper-V management tools. Using the Hyper-V management tools installed on their personal computer, the administrator is able to remotely administer the computer running the Hyper-V platform. In other words, the administrator is able to create and manage virtual machines on the Hyper-V platform using the Hyper-V management tools they've installed on their personal computer. This is all very well, but why would you want to do it this way? Well, keep in mind that both the Hyper-V platform and the Hyper-V management tools are programs. And just like any program, they require resources such as CPU and RAM in order to run. By installing the Hyper-V management tools on a different computer to the Hyper-V platform, you're effectively freeing up resources on the Hyper-V platform. These resources could be put to better use, such as running your virtual machines, for example. Later on in the course, I'll show you how Hyper-V virtual machines can be managed from a remote computer. For now, though, I'll keep things simple. From the list of features, I will select to install both the Hyper-V management tools and the Hyper-V platform on this computer. 
When you're ready to continue, just click OK. Windows 10 will now start to install the Hyper-V feature. This will only take a moment or two. Windows 10 has now finished installing Hyper-V. Notice that I'm being prompted to reboot the PC to complete the installation. During the reboot, Windows 10 will apply the hypervisor to the computer. So I'll reboot the computer and will return shortly. The computer has now finished rebooting. That's it for installing Hyper-V. In the majority of cases, this is how most Windows 10 administrators would install Hyper-V. However, you are also able to perform the install using Windows PowerShell. So I'll quickly uninstall Hyper-V and will return shortly. I've now uninstalled Hyper-V on this computer. To perform an install of Hyper-V using Windows PowerShell, I'll first click my Start button. And in the search bar, I will enter PowerShell. Then, from the list of results, I will find PowerShell, right-click on it, and then select the option Run as Administrator. From the PowerShell prompt, I will enter the commandlet Enable Windows Optional Feature. Next, I will add the online switch. The online switch ensures that this command is run against the operating system that is currently running on this local computer. Next, I will add the feature name switch, followed by the name of the feature I want to install, which in this case is Microsoft Hyper-V All. Following this, I will add the All switch. The All switch ensures that any parent features of the specified feature are also installed. Finally, I will add the verbose switch to give us a more detailed output. I'll now run the commandlet by pressing Enter. The command doesn't take too long to run. When the command is finished, you'll be prompted to restart the computer to complete the installation. To restart this computer, I will enter Y for Yes, and then I'll press Enter. That's it for installing the Hyper-V feature using Windows PowerShell. This concludes the lesson on how to install Hyper-V on a Windows 10 system. Now that Hyper-V is installed, in the next video I will look at some of the differences between Windows 10 Hyper-V and Hyper-V for Windows servers. I hope that you've enjoyed this tech tip and found it useful. For more videos, be sure to check out our YouTube page. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next tech tip.